like to talk about the XB API data and what it is uh, used for and what it is supposed and how it is used by customers. Um, this is, let's say, the challenge uh, many customers have that you have, uh, let's say, a number of system APIs which provide you access to data, but that kind of APIs are not very business oriented. They are quite often very technical and exposing that APIs directly to your consumers is not perfect um, because they may be hard to understand, maybe hard to maintain and that kind of stuff. And that's why it makes, say, it makes sense to put some kind of orchestration layer in between that system of record APIs and your API management governance layer. And for that, API Builder is, is supposed to be by providing an orchestration layer which can take in several different system APIs which might be coming out of cloud applications, your backend applications, your databases, and then you can use API Builder flows to orchestrate that APIs with each other, take a part of the data from a database, take another part from a cloud application, and then merge it together to the API you want. Each API Builder project will become a Docker container, which is executed in a Docker orchestration environment in a perfect world like Kubernetes, OpenShift, and then that environment is responsible for scaling in, scaling out that API builder containers to depending on, on, on the load you have on a certain API builder project. You can control that OpenShift or that um, container environment with a mesh governance system like Amplify Mesh Governance, where you then can attach individual policies to it. For instance, saying that an API builder project should only take in uh, 100 calls per minute, as an example. The other thing is that more and more it is obviously important that a team enables the business department to implement and develop the APIs on their own. And that's the other reason why API Builder is a good fit, because each API Builder project is individual and it's, it's created by the business department itself, saying that they have a need for a specific API, which they have designed using an API-first approach. And then that team can just initialize an API Builder project can implement that project with the flows and with the nodes and with the connectivity they want. And afterwards, they check it in into version control because it is a Node.js thing, it is JavaScript code and so on. And then a DevOps pipeline in place builds the Docker image and starts that Docker container on the OpenShift environment, which might be, which might be running anywhere, wherever the customer has um, a Docker orchestration runtime in place. So that means uh, with another look to it, it is used to integrate, transform, and orchestrate APIs. It becomes a mediation layer between system of records and business API, which business APIs which might have been um, designed in an API design tool. It's based on Node.js, and um, by that, it's becoming a Docker container, which is running as a microservice, which then can scale in and scale out. Um, where it will be deployed on your OpenShift or on your Docker orchestration environment like OpenShift, and then it depends where you have that kind of environments available. It has a low-code, no-code approach, but it is, you see it on the right, there is, a, let's say, a small flow shown which um, is using a number of nodes and that nodes uh, design or implement the way the API should behave. But even with that, let's say easy to use interface, it is still flexible, it is still extensible as you can easily create new nodes you want or you can take nodes which are already available and make it part of your, of your flow. And lastly, the API builder supports two different approaches the model approach where you have maybe a certain model like a person and if you would in a database and if you would like to have an API with allowing you to 
read that person, update that person, delete that person, etc. Then you can take that approach and then you have a CRUD API within minutes. Or you use the API first approach where you first create the API you want in an API design studio or editor and then you take over that API design put it into your API builder project and then you start implementing the different API endpoints by using that flexible flow concept you see on the right. That should be only the overview about the API builder and um, in the next video I will showcase how you can for instance take API builder and convert a SOAP service into a REST API.